Okay, I'll just let that run a little shorter today. We're still crickets. As a nation, we are crickets. The little pockets step up, show us how, show us the way, give us an indication there's a way to work with this. It reminds us of the wisdom of the past, playing out in the future today and then into the future. And if we don't step up, there's those that are going to come and take your way of life. And so we got some word here this over this last week of some stuff and some interesting things. Before I get to that, though, this is BTWRLM325. Kind of some breaking news just happened in the last few hours, which I'm always encouraged by, but, you know, the world is a, not a good place generally. There's always someone that wants to take from someone else or wants to threaten somebody else, and so we have that truth about us. And it's a side of us that we really should come to better terms with, but I think it's important nonetheless, despite all the noise we hear in the media and the stress that's put on uh, the conditions and everything that's going on, uh, that it's important for you to all hear that Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, they meet on the North Korean side of the DMZ. This has been a long-standing so-called conflict. We heard the news about the nuclear escalation and all that from a nation, a pipsqueak of a nation relative to the power of the United States that realized that it needs to be, the quills that it needs to have are nuclear if it wants to be a porcupine. And it's not that I'm even siding with the type of government that uh, North Korea might be or what it does to its people. And I guess that's the point. The people are being harmed. So there's nothing that this major power card of the United States can do but to harm the people even further. That when I hear their meeting over an issue that's been forever in my life, and understanding the dynamic and understanding the politics and understanding how to push and shove and all this other stuff, I'm always encouraged a bit that we have a little example that we need to work together to work work together. And however this all turns out, I don't know, but I thought you might need to know, or you'd be need to know, need to know for the first time. I guess I can read the first paragraph, not getting into the news, but uh, President Donald Trump became the United, first United States president to set foot in the North Korea, into North Korea itself, on Sunday afternoon, briefly crossing into the country to meet with leader Kim Jong-un in a session that led uh, to an agreement to restart talks on the nuclear disarmament. And so here we have the fits and starts of uh, two nations working uh, to try and solve a problem. And again, I don't even necessarily agree with the United States motives anymore. We don't hear what some of the stories are about why. It just looks like a big ludicrous, <laughs> ludicrous drive. We're heading in, into oblivion on warp speed or beyond. And I, I'm just encouraged that people still get together. I think we're missing that. My life has been one of understanding whether it was a truth or a lie. Diplomacy was really the king, if you will, to keep this stuff working. And so that we don't go into killing people. And then you saw the raps come off of that. And the United States becomes this big bludgeon that goes around the world. Encourages all the occupiers of for, of, in foreign countries to occupy sovereign countries. It's nonsense. All for some unstated uh, objectives. And I told you then we, we hit the wall of that, so they reversed it and they came back with this war of terror against the world. And that included the people of the United States. You've been hearing me report years and years and years now how that's now reflecting upon everybody in the world, including those same Americans that are supposed to be the do-gooders, that they're, they themselves are enemy combatants. And I said, so we're in a, and notwithstanding the fact that if you read the history, you can actually see we're in a war scenario within the country itself, civil war change this place, and if you needed a reference, a current reference, just go to the Tim's case, and the United States Supreme Court determined in the Tim's case, determined just this February, that the, Fed, the Civil War changed this place. Didn't explain how, but you can do some research and find out how, and you've heard it behind the woodshed as I was trying to, I'm not trying, I keep saying trying, I'm trying because I'm hoping people are receiving, but I am giving the message to y'all, the notice that we've been given. The Civil War didn't end. Things changed. Things changed some more, and ch things changed some more after that. And the people were, were required to stay vigilant and keep this nonsense from us. And so we're going to hear a little bit about that in the next couple news articles here as we move along. But before I get to there, I want to jump. While I'm in near North Korea, let's jump across the Sea of Japan, which is an interesting little sea. It's got very little. It's between uh, the mainland, North Korean Peninsula, China, Russia, and Japan. It's really almost a closed sea. It's got a very small opening to the Pacific. It doesn't 
In fact, it's referenced as being very Mediterranean-like. And we'll be jumping there, but before I get there, I want to... Something that would just fascinate me. <clears throat> if I suspend my disbelief on what I looks like this could also be, and the stuff that intrigues me more than lots of this other stuff that I find myself into, and the fight that we're in to try and just keep a basic standard of living underneath the law that provided for us to do so in America, allowing people to have property and to produce from the property and, and serve, if you will, serve the population, has been destroyed by this new fangled idea that you don't have to do that. In fact, to do that is a danger. It's a detriment to the world. The world itself has now a life and an identity. We can focus on the name Gaia if we want. But there's a whole bunch of people that have a religion in their mind about how that works. But anyway, getting back to what might might be reality, and what's very interesting to me, just fascinates me to know, and I want to talk about this a while back, but it didn't come up, but it is relative to jumping across the Sea of Japan into Japan, where a 50-million-year-old fossil captures a swimming school of fish was found in a museum in Japan. And this is not a small piece, a little small piece of fossil. This is quite a large piece of slate, sandstone. I think it's like 22 inches long, maybe 15 inches tall. And on it is a fascinating picture to me. And I, I say this in context of all the catastrophe theories that we can find are possible, some of which the elements of which I think were plausible. Again, I, I don't think we can prove anything out, but we can kind of look and see. And in a way, any more to me, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to be here any much longer. Uh, you know, we got, what, three decades max, and more people will show up. And before us, there was a bunch of decades and generations that didn't, you know, they, they claim wasn't, it was outside of this. But anyway, just an interest, so for some reason. The finding creatures and fossils, the recording of, of life, but before us, in theory, or theoretically, a long time ago. This is a capture that we're told, I guess I'm going to have to put my, my, suspend the idea that when I looked at this, this sandstone slate fossil gave me the impression of being a very cool drawing as well. An artist's idea put on a rock. That said, I can't prove that either, but to suspend that part, and then I think there are very talented artists that could do that. In looking at the structure of this school of fish in rock, permanently recorded, found in a museum, the fossil of which was actually found from the United States, in the, I think it was the Green River, captured a whole school of baby fish, what, less than one inch long, schooling in a direction. And this fascinates me to no end relative to the catastrophe cycle stuff and how a school of fish could be captured in its life, in a motion, in a school, an organized organization, and when you look at the picture, if you've ever watched fish schooling like this in small fish, this is captured just like you would look into a body of water and see how this is. Permanently frozen in rock. It, to me, it's just a mind-boggling fascination as if you want to look at catastrophe cycles all the time, how this little innocent, if you will, uh, gentle type of a formation was captured as beyond my imagination to be able to figure out how. They have theories, but I, I don't believe that I hear the theory. Someone said that the sand fell on this school. I don't I don't see that, because I don't know if you've met, seen fish. They move really fast to any motion. Now, in, this, in the picture, there's like 259 little fish together here. And if you know anything, if you've watched fish, they have this outer, ring, uh, outer um, it's like a line of fish in a formation that's outside the main body. That's captured in this thing, too. Within the school, there are apparently eight or nine individuals, and this is where we start to get again, where it captured my mind too. Though they saw it too late, they saw a danger and they turned. So there's eight individuals that are not, not going with the herd all of a sudden. But what came on them was so fast that they got caught too. I can almost hear, as I put a Twitter out, I can almost hear to the three, the nine fish saying, I'm out of, and then they get caught. Given there's a, catastrophe thing to their lives that trap them. Anyway, this uh, I cannot imagine how something as delicate as this formation and alive and dynamic within that life could be captured like this relative to any other theories about how the world ends, how people, you know, how 
It's easy to understand how, how a not dinosaur gets thrown into a pit and covered over for them bones and that fossil fuel and all that. But this delicate capture has just got has got me. I keep it up just to what look at that picture and marvel. How how in the world was such a, a dynamic small thing captured in rock and then we find it is uh, really a, a marvel to me. I don't know about you, but to me. So I've spent I guess enough time talking about it. I just don't understand also how it got over to Japan when it was supposed to be coming out of the United States, but uh, through in the Green River Formation. So that's over in the central United States area as well. Anyway, just a fascination to me. I get, I just kind of focused on this thing. It did, it does have an almost got an idea uh, that it was a painting, but uh, again, suspending that for the moment and looking with everything in the world of of how dynamic and catastrophe uh, and the the, the dynamic and force and power in the world, it seems destructive. This destroyed this little school, but how delicate that was to capture that and then to find that. What a, what a marvel. I I think I taught, tagged it wowsome Uh, to me it's just mind-boggling and this is the kind of stuff i'd rather look out in the world i guess so i'm not all doom and gloom behind the woodshed with my preferences and i guess i want to point out again this is not something these things i come to talk to you about are not what i want to do it's what it's necessary to do or to address and that school representing our society there's only going to be a few that turn and the question is do they turn soon enough and in this case you see the capture that they didn't turn soon enough so I'm asking us that are the few that will turn to turn quicker so that we at least maybe get the rest to move before the disaster hits, as delicate as we might be and as precarious as all life might be, naturally, not as invented by these nonsense people. Anyway, so uh, relative to what might be found in the future by scientists, if there is any future, given that we're all going to die in 12 years and the meteor is going to come and take everybody out anyway, given in the future we're going we might be actually looking at... Uh, finding other things within these fossils relative to the fish and this delicate this delicate life as we jump to another place close to the uh, corollary the, the Mediterranean itself from the Sea of Japan which is a, almost a closed body of water to the Pacific and it doesn't even have tides it has actually fresher water pretty fascinating but getting on over to another body looking very similar or very close to it getting over to the Mediterranean itself what we might find in the rocks in the future Those of you that will be tens of thousands of years into the future, given that giant meter doesn't show up and we don't kill ourselves off due to carbon, uh, weird plastic crust forms on Portuguese islands. This is forming on the rocks of Portuguese islands. I just was wondering when I saw this story relative to that fish story, at some future time, are we going to see the plastic in in fossils uh, with with, uh, delicate life forms all living together? In fact, if they have that plastic, you're going to, they're going to find in the future with the technology, they're going to find organisms that are eating that plastic. That's how it became plastic crust. It's uh, again, I think I think George Carlin was right. I think you know, the, if if we want to go to evolution, the Earth, if we're going to take Gaia is alive. Gaia in it, it, Gaia created man to create petroleum to create plastics because it wanted plastic. It's probably a, a really good theory. It's as good a theory as climate change. It's as good a theory of, as any, I guess, because of how this thing rolls out. But anyway, there's plastic forming itself on the rocks now, the plastic pollution. It's uh, everywhere, and there's uh, lots of people focusing on plastic. I find it, it might be a bit of a stocking horse. However, it is a problem, and uh, that's just us. This is the real pollution that man creates, not the one they make up to come and tax your life into oblivion underneath uh, man's uh, psychopath. Psycho- Pathic need to control others, make the wars, and cause the amazing hope the, 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 that it's amazing that two leaders so called get together to stop at least for a while to stop blowing each other up, beating on each other. But uh, anyway, so in the future we might see more plastic in our in our in a long time from now. If even if fossils are made the way they said, and over the long time, all that is open to debate if you study far enough. And at some point, I, I've kind of fallen back away from really looking at all that. I was used to be really into, not the into it, but I really didn't wanted to understand this catastrophism, the reality of how the universe is kind of pulled together, all the sciences. Why, why are we here? What's the water about? Why not many places? And then I said early on, I said, no, it's got to be everywhere with the dynamics of the sun and denied by academia, if you will. And so that that's tailored my whole 
observation of not really not really trusting a bunch of how we we look at the world. We only got a few senses. I got into electronics, and that taught me a great deal about sensor uh, senses uh, sensors and how they they can how they can be deceptive and uh, what they can be used to do. And then we get and then we can add statistics on that, which is another one. So, you know, we don't really know about this place. I just find fascinating what's going on. The thought about the drawing on the rock came from my experience. Again, all experiential. When I was a young man, and I was told to make a book report, a science report uh, in an anthropology, and I found I ran across the Piltdown Man. And no one told me as a young kid that that was a fraud, and I went and put a lot of time into it. That was the drawings I told you we did, and all the bibliography made a fantastic report. Did a great job on the report, but then I found out that was all a fraud. Someone was advancing them, themselves in science. And so I see this, so that, that was actually the first thought I saw, that, that rock, that fossil. So suspending even that, suspending that maybe that's a fraud. The idea that we have this life stuck in rocks is pretty, it was just fascinating. The delicate nature and dynamic nature of that school of fish, it kind of spoke to me in a lot of different dimensions, even to societies, how we kind of herd along the school of fish that we are. We get lured into a hook and they hook us up they pull us out of the water and beat us and club us in the head to take us out and how we respond that way how uh, this nature that seems to be uh, th that life seems to be is it's pretty consistent that uh, maybe in the future here we've got this uh, this adulteration that comes in that we it looks like an adulteration that we're poisoning things but like in Carlin's theory it's actually the future as some other force predicts and actually brought into bear and we're just the agents of that change. <laughs> so, anyway, moving into uh, something a lot more serious, but and it, it, it does not uh, give me joy to explain this, but it is highly, highly consistent. It does not at all surprise me. Uh, close to the, inside the Mediterranean Sea now, in a place called Italy, uh, something I've talked to you about that got me in a bit of trouble. And I, I guess the more I think about it, I've told you, I'm almost, I feel I'm real lucky to be alive with regard to the subject matter. And it has to do with the uh, systemic governmental uh, ch uh, child trafficking and pedophilia and that. And it's been in the system. When I was doing a doc documentary, I identified it inside the system, I think around 2000. By about 2003 or four. I had been dealt with by those that apparently were watching. Fascinating where they have their eyes and ears because that project got destroyed. I wasn't able to expose exactly what this next story happens to explain to us. But not maybe in the actual, well, one of the officials, but the idea that it goes on and has gone on. And how a secret can be kept within a system. You could be looking, right? It's transparent to you all. All these things that have informed me how I come here today. It jumps me back to 2000 when I started to see this within a system uh, that just an, ab an abomination to exist within a system that you want to call civil that all these officials are involved in. It's hard to believe that this goes on to harm other people. And for who knows what real reasons, but uh, a mayor, a doctor, this is again in the Mediterranean Ocean now, in Italy it has to come out. And I wonder about the understory about this. I don't have time to check it out. Mayor, doctors, and social workers arrested for brainwashing children into thinking their parents sexually abuse them. And I have to point out, this is what, I don't even like talking about this stuff, but it's important. And I wasn't able to bring to light the things that you're seeing today. Uh, like I said, uh, most people that do this kind of work don't exist much after they're caught. And I don't, I think the only thing that saved me is I didn't have an ability to come back and prove all the things I'd found in my documentary because they destroyed all the evidence, which was all on film. And so when they destroyed the evidence, see, I didn't have anything to go back. And I think that's, there was, there was a temperament there. But uh, this is essentially what I had found, that doctors and social workers and judges and defense attorneys, this is where the direction that went. I didn't know who else was involved, but I could find that there was cover-ups going on right in front of everybody's faces. And I told you how you identify that. It's in what's supposed to go on that doesn't go on, the silence of proper response. That it came to me that this abuse and things was going on. These people have exposed that the, the child, they call them the children. i got to understand that's a legal term. It means you're a ward of the state and the parent is a custodial agent in uh, underneath the state's control. 
you're not a mother and father here. So but without getting those technicalities of what people might think are semantics, which is a big mistake when you do that. But Italian police have arrested 18 people, including the mayor, social workers, and psychologists, for allegedly brainwashing children into believing their parents had abused them in a scheme to take them away from their families and sell them to foster parents. Now, in the United States, we found, and I don't know if it's changed, this, this is open to uh, someone else who's doing the follow-up. In, in the United States, the agencies themselves get money for putting children, so-called, into foster care. I found behind the scenes of the bright faces you see on the news relative to foster care, there's this big problem, this big child abuse system and pedophilia and child trafficking system. It's those A lot of it is those runaways you hear about, and then there's a whole lot more than you don't hear about. This is the first step. This What you're hearing here, the brainwashing of the children, is they get the child to testify against the treatment of the parent within the context of the need to take, and they make a record. I tell you, the record is so critical in all this. This is the evidence of how they justify it. That they get the re on the record that justifies the plausible reason to continue the hold which they put in the system. And the kids go in the system. And so, th this is the first step, actually, in how they get your sons and daughters in to destroy your family as well. This is a, I, I don't know the words to this. This is so terrible, bad. Again, I didn't know this end of it. I knew it happened. You could watch them making the record to do this didn't have any actual evidence that, well, you never get to talk to the kids, so you can't tell what's going on with them. The few instances we've got to peer in, uh, they are doing, in the initial statements that they make, we do have proof that they talk, it's mind, it's brain, it's um, well, like, like hypnosis. They seed the, the knowledge into the into the young the, the young mind in order to get eventually where they need to go. They themselves will be doing the abuse. You'll find, uh, we I found a high propensity for uh, what we call now what LGBT type stuff they're running those agencies and then the one particular thing that caught the one w girl that was stolen from the family way back when there particularly was interesting that the fallout later we find out that foster care got was pulled into foster care they then changed the child's name moved her to another place in foster care and then eventually the agent the working in the in the department eventually got the girl and we haven't really heard more but there was a again hearsay that she's now she's now a lgbt grown up by an lgbt for the purpose of doing that so that's conjecture i gotta throw that out there i don't have proof of that but that's what the words coming back over all these years happened of showing me again the consistency of that this goes on not just where I found it but I told you years ago that when I again remember the Sandusky thing in Pennsylvania and the youth judges I told you that's bigger and then I found out the connection to the the university there back over to, over into the across the pond I said this thing is massive this problem all on the markers of how this works and here you go they finally Italian police have finally arrested allegedly arrested this a systemic problem within within a government where it, it just it's un, almost inconceivable they actually used the electroshock and everything else to convince the kids that the parents were, were no good so they can make that record so they could so these officials could do what they would and do what they will why one of my suggestions and still today it's still holding up uh, if your your sons or daughters are taken you need to make every meeting I'm not saying you make their meeting. You make up meetings to go meet so that they always are in the front end. The kids are in the front having to be dealt with. Don't let them be forgotten until we can, as a society, work through this problem. We, we Here's your, another evidence. Those of you that are interested, and I don't mean interested, I mean want to, you know, you can have a, a force and effect to stop this nonsense. The officials creating the cover for things, and I want to remind you, this is all through the rights of child. This all comes out of the UN as well. You may, for those of you that are don't that kind of disregard that or don't want to believe it, you're not reading enough. It's all there. That's how I was able to track it down. Uh, the rights, all this stuff that's the rights that are imputed that they're adopted by governments are killing us, and we don't stop it. We don't step up. We're not the eight little baby fish that step up to say, "Hey, I'm out of here," even if we didn't get to finish our sentence. We don't even do that much. 
Well, I'm asking us to do more than that. Way ahead of time, we get the heck out of the school and maybe lead others away, uh, at least in the initial danger, and then, then come back at it if we can, because we aren't really the school of fish. We're actually people. And if we even care about ourselves a little bit, we should be interested in all this. And this could happen to one of yours next to you. Uh, but I, I was blown away to see this uh, finally coming out. I failed to be able to get the word out in time. It took 10 years. It finally started coming out. Now you're hearing the nonsense. It's global, folks. It's all global because they were given license by uh, other people just like them. I also heard a theory about the do they put LGB types into officials to have blackmail? I, I don't know if I believe uh, that totally. I think it, when they get in there, they, it's like a birds of a feather. They realize they can function inside what they whatever their uh, abhorrent needs are. And so they protect each other that way. It's not a blackmail necessarily. And I don't necessarily disagree with blackmail, but I don't necessarily think it has to be blackmail. I think these people pull together. And that's how you can have it working so so efficiently, right in front of you, a court of law, so-called. And again, I'm not so deluded to believe. At that time already, I saw the problems in the court. So this is, we're talking decades ago. I'd already seen some of these problems. But to watch in, to look in, and being able to identify a, something like this inside a system, was quite a profound uh, revelation to me to try and pull out. And uh, again, I just got caught up. They caught me up. All I can tell you is there's no reason why what happened to me after when I was not just, it was kind of interesting. When I made a comment to a couple people, not that they were anything, it just got the word got out that I was only a couple months away from finishing my documentary. All of a sudden something happened. It didn't happen until then. And so then eventually the that project got destroyed. All the evidence got destroyed that I was pulling together. And uh, so that, that goes by the in the memory hole. However, I, when I saw this title, that's what I was finding, folks. It's not, you, you know, again, I guess maybe I'm looking for the confirmation, folks, and you see across the world. This is not just locally it, it, around somewhere just to a few people. I don't know how these people do this, They but they all work together to pull this off for whatever ends they have, and I guess I just want to use this not only to expose this problem within the system, systemic, transparent, right before you, this is how all these agendas get done right before your eyes. Eighteen people finally got the cops uh, highlighted. I don't know how that happened. I didn't look deep enough. It happened. It's good enough for me right now to point to you. There are things that we need to address. We can't be waiting we can't be even the one of the nine fish that say I'm out of and don't get to finish our se- sentence. Uh, we can't let these people, this danger, this destruction, this uh, uh, the human, if you will, the man, human animal catastrophe befall us. If we stay in the schools, and now turning to a Borg, the hive, we are susceptible to being destroyed. And uh, so, I don't, part of me is, happy to see this story. Part of me is destroyed to see this story. I don't know what to say about you. This is about to you all about, about this. This is what the problem is. When I, I get to the points where I see it, I'm standing in the middle looking at the good part and the bad part at the same time. I don't know what to feel about it. Just, we need to, I guess the bottom line, we need to stop this stuff. And here's more for those of you that would deny any of it or don't think it's not something you can't find local to you. Here we go all the way to Italy. And I said, that's reflecting here. This is an international thing, folks. I don't know where these people come from, how they figured it out, but this is one thing of transparency before you go into and affecting, uh, potentially affecting uh, someone you know. And I'm, like I said, uh, I'm glad it's out if the information, if nothing else. How this happens too is that there's no internal control and accountability, which is one of the main things that I'm focused on. Even if we're not seeing it right now, I'm insisting on it. That's for myself. Uh, for the things, and I guess I this use it both. For myself, make sure I'm accountable to what things I do. But those that would come and aggress me or others like me, uh, and that's all of y'all, and they don't do it pursuant to an or, um, the actual lawful fashion, I'm apt to jump jump at that. I'm apt to start working on how to resolve, how to stop that. It takes the strenuous and dig dedication to do so. It doesn't take a lot of physical effort more than right now making that written record to run these things down in the record, which is I'm going to get to a point here in a moment. But uh, this is inside and systemic. This lack of accountability. You think can things? How can it happen that there's not that there's transparent to you? And how can this conspiracy? You no know, conspiracies. The word conspiracy is not negative. It can be a good conspiracy. 
It could be just a conspiracy of people knowing something and whatever. It's when you do something wrong through that conspiracy that it becomes the problem. But how can these systems that are supposed to be limited and, and constrained to doing things lawful, how do they mean, how do they get out of hand like they are and have been? Like last week I was talking about HB 2020 and the international imposition of a fraud, a carbon system, climate change, nonsense, sustainable, non just cr fr crime and fraud against everybody, punitive across the board. How does this even happen that it's inside your systems without accountability? Here was a report that just struck me right, almost almost slapped me in the face. I got a little bob and weave in me lately, so it didn't hit me too hard here. I was able to just feel the whiff. But this is how it happens here, folks. And this is why I keep saying you can't just keep giving over to someone else. Bad don't fix itself. Report says DHS, Department of Homeland Security, uh, can't manage internal misconduct because the DHS just doesn't do anything about internal misconduct. So let's go back to Italy, which is n like any other place around you with relative to these abuse, uh, abusing kids. And I'm saying that they're, I, add, I add on top of that they do it for a purpose. It's another purpose to get them into foster care because there's big money and big exploitation and big trafficking behind and all that. So the cops only caught the surface part. And I wonder, I wonder who short, shortchanged that. Somebody got called out and found out about it, and so they had to go, do something, as I've told you. The officials getting caught are very rare. In this case, they did. But why does that exist right in your face? Because you think that there's accountability going because the law means something. And I'm telling you there's a whole lot of bad in the system right now. And I'm not going to make the equivocation or that some are good. No, the ones that are good that are not calling it out are bad. They're accessories after the fact. If you want to see the law, you yourself can go to a federal for the United States, a federal cover at 18 U.S.C. 4 and 3. Section 4 and 3, 18 U.S.C., you'll see, once you tell someone there's a felony, and they have to, you have to transmit it along to the one that's going to do something about to arrest the felony or the crime. And if you don't, those that don't, and if you don't in the first instance, it's an accessory to that felony. Called misprison of felony is the first, and then you're accessory to that. So it's not even, again, not opinion. I just, again, there's, you can just write this, copy and paste your authority to do these things, at least make the record, but here's the reason. These internal these systems internal to government do not care about doing anything about the internal misconduct. There's kind of reasons for that. They're not good reasons, but there's reasons. If they, they started doing it, well, they might actually do, do things right, and they might not be able to do all that they're supposed to do. But otherwise, nowadays, because of the lawyer, the bar association, and the ability or the susceptibility to being sued, the so-called litigious society, they don't want to make their record against themselves, do they? And so you're not you're going to hear them doing the Fifth Amendment a whole lot without citing it. I'm not going to uh, tell you that wrong is happening in this department. It might mean I have to do some work here. Find out I don't have enough people to work for me because they're all messed up. And we're going to find, again, the story, I guess, here, uh, you'll find out that there's, I've told you, jurisdiction and authorities are the where you start. And unless you can prove those out or have them, uh, like we do Core War until when it's import, in the important part, or maybe in a, a, a collateral type of quo warranto, maybe even like a show cause, where you ask for you, you have them present their authority. They're, they're in law, not they're made up. They can make it up, but if it's not in law, then we go to prove that in the objective basis. If you don't have, if you're not doing that work, transparency is happening. You've given over the accountability, and here's our first evidence. If you didn't understand it before, that the DHS doesn't do anything about internal misconduct. That is a microcosm of the government. Why something can happen within these systems, like over in Italy, to find that kid, children under the color of child's rights and child safety and, and welfare, they are abusing people. I say people now because it's not just children. When, they move, when you move this into other areas in the governments, they start abusing you. Now, everybody understands this kind of stuff, and they don't, they don't, or they don't understand it. But they don't deep, go deeper and to see that it's actually systemic. And then they do have to step up and do something about it. And the only thing I would refer to just as a past reference of what we were required was Thomas Jefferson's quote, you have to have an educated populace vigilant and active against the encroachments and trespasses and occupations. And we're not, folks. We're just not. And here's a, the fact that they will come out and tell you that. They won't do a thing about wrong. It, it is is the point. 
but they're not going to do it internal. Bad don't fix itself. How can they do it transparent to you? Because bad don't fix itself, and you let it go. Now, I don't want to get into the... I've got to be careful here because I'm noticing a lot of people are saying uh, acquiescence is all this. Yes, there's a element to that. Consent, yes, but it's not just that. So I'm hes- I wanted to, I want to comment it because I know some of you will be talking about it. But you know, silence is acquiescence. It's not just that, though. There's a whole lot more. Uh, they're just not supposed to be doing it up front. And, and, so, and we're not active. So our, our actual acquiescence is not really agreement. It's just our failure to stand up in the duty to arrest as well. No, that does maybe sound like a semantic consent, but it's really not. There's two functions here. You really have to be careful, and I don't like to get stuck in the uh, the consent thing. I don't. It's a form of uh, if you're pointing out your finger, you got three pointing back. Yeah, that's like a a dual responsibility, not just to say it's consent, but that there was something to do, and it and the do has to be functioning. Uh, anyway, so I don't know how else to explain that. Uh, so here it is, folks. The reason how you can see. Internal conspiracies, uh, things happening transparently is because there's no accountability. And inside those systems, there's no uh, intention to be accountable, notwithstanding what's written. Now you have to understand, uh, I don't, I'm not naive about so, a lot of this, uh, how this all works. And you think I, I say, oh, I write a letter and it fixes everything. No, the rainbow doesn't come out. The, 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 the fluffy pink unicorn doesn't run on a rainbow. But it starts setting the record to counter the plausibility that they're using to cover the thing that's transparent to everyone else. And so you have to engage, and I, like I said, make a record. Move with the record before you move in physical form because of the way the dynamic is. Don't keep telling yourself, ask yourself the question, how can a conspiracy be so large? You just saw how. I just That was a story that explained it to you. Entire systems. DHS covers the entire United States of America, and now you know the United States of America now is executive experience that, that covers the whole world under the, the war uh, of terror. See, folks, you know, get your mind into a bigger space about how fast you get to every one of you. And there is no accountability. And if you didn't get the, from the fact they went to judicial expedience and through the judiciary, however corrupt it is out on, on the curb, you're missing it always, all the time. And yet it's so simple to rally up and Really, it does take some effort, but uh, different sectors of society, different sectors of the populace rising up to interfere with what's happening, that abominations inside the system are occurred, and then people just say, yeah, they're there, that's government, and throw their hands up. In fact, I saw someone, you know, it's really an insult. I don't know who posted. They did a non, I think it was in the UCY chat, this HB 2020, oh good, the the folk, you know, Oregon, Oregon deserves it. That, that's where you go. It's it's ludicrous. Why would you, why would you want to wish that kind of harm on people? Why are you of a mentality you've given up that you would wish punitive harms on people, on innocent people, because of this idea of a geography and a border and all that? Not that the borders aren't important, but you put on everybody that's in in that in that country. If we want to go back to the more organic stuff. Uh, a harm that's it that's our that's our spirit now whether they're in that country or whether they avoided or escaped the country or felt they were justified to leave under the pressures instead of deciding how to how to abrate how to uh, engage this and that as i say that's another thought a long weeks ago i made some comments about get, doing stuff and a couple of people took a little bit of an issue and i don't i understand it i'm not i didn't i'm not talking to approve a approve my point over what was said that they didn't like the fact that I'm saying you need to like you're not doing anything and then people are doing something and they've been beat down and now they're they've been wounded about how they were doing it and so they took a little bit of issue with me saying nothing was being done by any by people I'm not talking to those of you that have been doing and got into a, this situation before we understood all this and got hurt and beat down and need to if you will lick your wounds but they are only the wounds and they didn't kill you and so there's a there's still an ongoing thing. I don't know how to say be softer about the fact that we have our wounds, uh, and I see really wounded people uh, that lash out in that wound from that wounding, but they were still not learning better. I'm not talking to those that went in, got the fight, got 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 wounded or got beat up and scratched and, and broken, and are trying to figure out their place now. I'm saying there's still a there's still a duty that's needed to be. Don't abandon 
the fact that okay we didn't know we needed to know better we tangled into a fight we we maybe shouldn't have been we weren't prepared for you know i've come here for 10 years to explain how to better do those and to not get into those so i'm not talking to those of you that in the past have really worked hard got beat up i mean listen the people i'm talking about the child that i'm talking about the the mother and father are dead and i and one i think the mother was was actually killed but because she was fighting in the system so i understand i'm not certainly was not berating what their efforts were at some point you do have to stop it's just it, the attrition on your life is is a lot i'm not talking to you all that way but i am saying that consider what i'm saying about how you do it better you may not be you may be out of a position to do anything about it also i understand all that too so when I say we're not doing anything, I'm not talking to you that have and got beat up and are convalescing a bit. I'm asking you to re continue considering that there's a better way to go and maybe still look at how you re-enter in to be more the witness than you are the the combatant in a fight like this. Or the, the biggest agency in the country running the roar of, of terror against you is doesn't care about accountability. Does that mean that there's no accountability? And I say that's in you. Those of you that tried and got beat up, I've been beat up enough. I've seen it, but I, you know, I'm still, as I learned, I got a little bit more able to do what I needed to do to continue the pressure. I, I looked ahead and avoided quite a few things that would have truly beat the heck out of me bad. And and so I'm not uh, again. I didn't address that a long time ago. People took issue with me saying no one's doing anything. I'm not talking to those of you that are in a convalescing or have been taken down in life so bad that you can't come back. But, but there is that still that you still have to figure something out and move it because that harm's still happening to other people. And really, the people that got beat up are really. When you sit back and look at your lessons, you're probably better positioned than people that haven't. And so, uh, going back here, how can a, how can something be transparent in the system and you not see it? Is because the system doesn't hold itself accountable. And I think people that are birds of a feather, they flock together to not be accountable. And these are some terrible people. That's why the caucusocracy comes present again. And so let me move on to now something I talked about last week and how a condition doesn't get checked. And so you have rising up inside it the worst, pushing on to the rest of the people they purportedly represent. Punitive harms on innocent people. And most of y'all are crickets. And now, what I talked about last week was this thing, and I was trying to also, in my attempt there, because I don't know if I did or not, explain what we're seeing in the news relative to what was actually happening down in the law, relative to the senators uh, leaving, the avoiding instead of evading, and the, and the Democratic governor jumping on him with the OSP, and this systemic, there's no checking and balancing, there's no accountability by the Constitution that these governments were supposed to be held, these officials were supposed to be held to, and there's no people, as I was exposing last week, there's no people to point that out. That there's no real check and balance and accountability, and there's we're not there to insist, however futile it seems. And uh, you could, again, I'm an example of what I guess you can consider a futility and no, there's no joke. What the foundational evidence that we have and, and judgment in law we have, notwithstanding that they ignore a criminal, we ignore law. Well, that's a revelation. Criminals will ignore law. Okay, so since 2013, um, was well, I was one of the named parties along with someone else that was a named party along with the Jefferson Mining District. You know, we sued the state of Oregon, we sued a couple of legends, we sued the Democratic Party, we sued the Republican Party. So don't think I'm partisan when I speak in favor of Republicans. Uh, what they're doing right. I'm trying to get everyone back to the law. We sued the Bar Association. And so you start seeing the assembly of the government right here. and How a, a crime, a, a organized criminal syndicate could have happened right in your face, transparent to most of you all, except for your griping about how bad government is. How a thing can be bad and operate right in your face is the fact that they don't have any internal accountability. And we, so based on our judgment, just to let you know, I can't let you know too much, but I've told you we've been writing letters. We're writing enforcement letters on that. 
they're, they're, whatever effect they're having, we're not certainly getting many. We expect a response, but we'd never get one. So that's not on us. But we are required to give notice in equity. And so we're doing that relative to the suit, which is quite expensive. It absolutely bullseyes what happened in Oregon, HB 2020, with carbon. Remember, not carbon dioxide, no, the carbon, you carbon units, the punitive harm on all you innocent carbon units, that the Democrats and and lawyers, the Boyer Bar Association members, all part of that, were willing to put on you under the color of lawful government. And we came in with the 2013 in foresight, seeing this coming up, and I can already hear all you, all you folks making a f- funny word on foresight. Now, I'm not talking about that other thing. I'm talking about having sight ahead of time where this all is going, making a law, taking, looking, engaging. The same nonsense that went on in this legislative ses- session, I've told you, they're pushing through now all the appropriations bills at the very end. Uh, that's part of, part of, the, of how the leverage funding for how they destroy you is in all those bills. So that you, they come so fast. So the senators are involved in allowing a lot of that. Uh, because why? Uh, what I told you last week, they were avoiding. They made a deal and to let you know. Uh, and this is, a again, the educated masses or even the ignorant masses, just on their emotion, rallying up and putting so much pressure on the system that when the Republicans left and avoided, under their duty to avoid, as I explained last week, avoided the vote, the quorum, being around for the quorum to vote on this punitive harm on innocent people. And the people responded. Even as, as ad hoc as it happened, and to my knowledge, to my awareness, not in the law either, they still were allow, uh, able to put enough force on the Democratic uh, Party and rule in Oregon to kill HB 2020 since last we talked. And I'm still hesitant to see whether or not they still, uh, whether or not that was a trap. But so far, so good. And when they and the Republicans returned. Now, why are we even here as a people account trying to get accountability? Not within the law, but within our sheer force and mass. Is because there's no accountability in the system, allowing a transparent treason to happen, which we're identifying in our letters at JMD back to them. Uh, calling out the uh, the what do you call the um, inadequacies that are sitting right there that no one other nobody else challenges, and I'm not saying that to put us in any puzzle. Just no one else challenges jurisdiction authorities, lawful jurisdictions, and all this. And I don't mean about challenging their oath. I say I, en- I embrace their I embrace that they say they took an oath. I don't care about it because because I know that there's other demands that they if they take the oath I can attach them that are so much more important. That uh, some other angle popped up here just in, in the last day, which we didn't speak to, but we we don't listen. I don't make all the notices page after page after page. I throw in concept terms that I'm in uh, when I say the governor's authority was not was not lawful. Uh, in there is a big a big uh, amount of work that that can be pulled out later if they want to respond to try and say some aspect of what she did was. And someone has written an article, someone I've, I've talked with in the past, met with. I respect him very much uh, for his views and his research. Uh, I wish I'd talked to him more. We just don't seem to get together. But he points out a different issue. Uh, but it's still along the lines of I te- keep talking to you about what's the warrant in law for what they do? What's the warrant in the, how did you get the office, let alone uh, be the, 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 the lawful officer, and the lawful office, and then then you get to the lawful cause, and then the lawful order. How is all that lawful? Our lawsuit in 2013 exposed this as well, when a judge that was from an incompetent jurisdiction was an incompetent judge in his status, in a court that was not established to to hear and determine the jurisdiction and authority, hear and determine the cause. It trespassed on the case to try and make it sound like he could write a dismissal order. When the, one of the orders said, I have no jurisdiction. Invalidating the whole thing, but proving, when I, we do a quo warrant tour, when you do, show me your warrant, it's not just, a, let me see your oath. Let me see how you're lawfully here to do the lawful thing lawfully. It sounds like, as I'm repeating myself, but each step has to be lawfully done, and each step has a different qualifier. That we evidence in our 2013, the record, if you look at our record and understand what you're looking at, we reference this very same thing that uh, Gregory Williams starts to speak about, that he thinks people 
in Oregon. He's critical like I am, but in a, just a slight different way relative to another step away from what we were, were focused on. But is within the context of qualifying an authority in the office of governor. And I'm talking, so here we are, accountability. We're not getting it from inside the system. Bad don't fix itself, folks. You will have to go, you, the ethical, moral beings will have to go in and do this to, to stop this offense against you. Because HB 2020 was, was killed, but it's not going to go away. It was mortally wounded. These people, the infrastructure for all, the capacity to bring this back when you go to sleep is right there. And so, I'll just give, we're not stopping. We're going to, we've already got two more letters. They just didn't get time to send them out. Uh, sent on this issue relative to our, again, we're enforcing a foundational default judgment. We're not just talking our opinion. This is something that they've agreed they've done wrong and, and wrongly and wrongfully. Those are all different words. Go check them out, folks. It's a pretty interesting thing about vocabulary. And they all have their own power if you uh, operate it right that uh, Gregory Williams talks about some other thing that, that he's identified, that I went through this a different way, but he brings at it again. I like when someone comes and does the research and can po fo focus on a written, the objective base, the black and white. And he points out the Oregon Constitution says something relative to the offices, the officers. But I want you, so those of you that are thinking this was like hyperbola, and this is a, oh, you know, what's a, what's 22 cents a gallon of gas for carbon? You don't understand the monster. You're totally useless to yourself and everybody else. You're a danger to yourself and everybody else if that's what you think was going to go on here. Uh, that he brings up an interesting uh, int uh, um, piece of information. Again, always trying to qualify. Do these office, Are these officers lawful in their office and in their capacity and in the things they do? Uh, we challenge that in our uh, in our latest document uh, le uh, notice enforcement's going in. We challenge that directly that the governor's order call. I called it the call because the statute calls it a call for the state police to to go after the senators was unlawful. Now we say that the whole office is no good for different parameters. Gregory Williams tells us if we go to the Constitution, if you look how the officers hold their office relative to how they how they function underneath the money follow the money folks as i say those people you those of you in constitution you think you know so much we need you to research this kind of stuff that the the there's a law in oregon that that determines how the officials being candidates can use donated funds for their campaigns to run for office and in Oregon, the Constitution says it's you can only listen, folks. This is how interesting you can only use the funds coming from your district. So those of you that have heard that money comes from outside the states and comes into the coffers of these politicians, Oregon law says that that money could be there, but you can't use it for certain things in particular to be hold the office to get to the hold the office. I hope you appreciate right there when you're when I'm telling you you have to research. I'm talking you do it in a substantive way for certain things, not what you think's supposed to be out there. All you're looking at is the facts. At this point, did the money used in campaign contributions go to get the office? And Gregory Williams will point to you, and by his research, you can follow that up. The Governor Brown violated a principle of the Constitution relative to campaign financing and expenditures by using money from outside the district to gain her office. And he points out in the Constitution, black and white, no opinion, when someone does that, it's a felony. He then turns around, like I would, and looks at the other side, uh, Senator Bertschager. He points out some numbers about Senator Bertschager. Senator Bertschager used campaign funds that were given to him from outside the, his district, and he used those to gain his office. He's in violation. Gregory Williams speaks to this idea, this really a principle of having uh, washing, ha having your, your feet clean. You, you have to be true to your position. He's pointing out that there's a violation that has a stated penalty for its violation. So those of you that think this was just a fluff, and you think that what we're looking at here is fluff, and you wonder why government's so bad, is that it takes people like Gr uh, Gregory Williams, maybe even like myself, to come forward to remind us we have a thing to do here and it's not that much work and we until we start pressing the very first point 
we're not going to test the other parts of the government, which are just as bad, and letting it happen. The DHS, the, the overarching authority in this country now for law and justice because of the war of terror, does tells you they will not do internal accounting, accountability. That's what's going on in the States. That's what's been going on. It's what black people say government's no good. But I said that's on us. We sort we point too many times, and that's on us because we got three pointing, three fingers pointing back. And the duty, as we're told in this re- Republican formed government, was that the mass of educated people keep themselves from being harmed. And you are so close to being harmed. You watched HB twenty twenty get to the point where a governor proclaimed an authority, and the OSP, the Oregon State Police, the Department of Safety for the state, said that they were constitutional orders. Well, our, we, our position at JMD is it absolutely was not. The call was not a lawful order. The office is not lawfully held. We now see where we're positioned. This is how you start working this thing backwards. We have a record now. I can look at Gregory Williams' work, and I can we absolutely are in the fact of challenging the office. This is one more log on the pyre we get to throw. Well, we already just, uh, we were telling the OSP they were to sit to make sure the law was being enforced when the people like Peter Courtney came to them, to the governor, and said, you need to go uh, seek out and uh, use the OSP to arrest them. The OSP was required to qualify everything I'm telling you right here to qualify whether they had an actual valid and constitutional order before it to execute. We're blaming the OSP for failing to do that. And what I said, so when we see HB 20, it's a, we're told it's died, and they and we went through Saturday and nothing happened from it. And so I'm going to hope that that's the case. We were so close, folks, to having this thing, this, this monster come in on this country, uh, this fraud, this treason. You call it a treason. I don't call it treason. The people that we sued that are trying to get that thing passed call it a treason. They said that they were willing to work uh, to make war on the laws of the United States. That's a long-term deci- uh, quote for the word treason, if that's, all, if that's all it was. They determined all this in our default. That's our record. I don't come up with an opinion. And we get to now challenge the authority of this governor. It, because they pulled this back and the governors went back, we're still enforcing our equity, uh, equity uh, rights. Uh, this is, that's when I tell you when you make a record. It's, do you, are you still in the game when everybody else goes home? Are you the little fish? I'm hoping that we're the little fish that turned long before the real catastrophe. The catastrophe faked. They did a head fake on us this time. We're already turned, folks. We're trying to tell the rest of the school, don't. I'm telling you, folks, the school here, don't go there. Stop. Turn around. There's a danger there. Let's come back and relook at this situation. Is this the place we want to be? And do we, are we going to invoke the power and responsibility to make it, make it, make us be in a better place? That's all I've really been saying all this time for 10 years. Saying we have a better thing that we can get to do, and we have black and white to do it. Not like all the Patriot stuff I saw uh, going through decades of the 90s and people getting hurt terrible bad. Yes, I said terrible bad. So Gregory Williams, again, I, pre- I can't appreciate Gregory. Uh, I don't talk to him. I wish I talked to him more, actually. Well, we just don't have a, a, a closer connection. But he brings up a very interesting, very simple way as I tell you all the time, and I guess that's why I appreciate it, uh, he, black and white, copy and paste, here's what they did wrong, then he proves it, he goes, he'll show you how to prove it, you get the link later in the broadcaster. you go through and you watch out, you go through every one, you could be sitting down in your kitchen, nice and safe, and nobody's with a gun to your head, nobody's going to stick you in a cage, to go through and document how, anywhere, you can do this anywhere, apparently there's a, a generic website, it's supposed to be pretty accurate, on how all these expenditures go. You can go and you can start identifying whether officers, whether the, first of all, there's a provision for it in your constitution or your statutes, and then whether or not your officers are in office lawfully. To be able to challenge this stuff, you hit them, but you can take out their knees before they even get going. And the way I do it, because it's always, it's, you know, we're always behind by a day, but we still keep plugging away. We say the OSP was duty bound to arrest that when that order came to them. And I, we cite different statutes in the Constitution, black and white, copy and paste. Now, to let you know, Oregon doesn't have an impeachment process, but they claim that uh, what um, delinquency in office, malfeasance, incompetency, and one other thing, I can't, it doesn't come to me real quick for you today, uh, is criminally liable. There's no impeachment, but you can be held to crimes as an official for those things in one extra. So we, and to just let you know how you, how you work the news, 
again, it's all kind of easy and you know, a rote idea. It shouldn't be that complicated. Even for you, that, those of you that tried hard, got beat up, wounded, don't really have a place, you got a few minutes maybe. Even with the minor, most, if you have access to the internet, you definitely have the tools. You go look at what they're talking about. You can pull out all kinds of stuff and make make very solid uh, communications, notices. Uh, I, ca- I got to be careful. Again. We have literally a default judgment in law that you may or may not have, but it doesn't mean you can't make the foundational notice to them about what the requirements of the law are. And that's enough uh, to the start with that you can be doing even in your most wounded state. You can sit there with a sipping a straw with a, you know, a tea in your mouth uh, with all your bandages on of how brutally you were treated by the government and saying, okay, I'm going to do this smarter. Look what they just said in the news, and I'm going to relate this to a violation of the Constitution, and I'm going to go tell them that. And so I don't know what else. You can do it outside of the system. You, you can do it where you, you don't, you're not really involved with that at all. You can do it from out of state. Because when you have the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and the Bar Association involved, that's trans-state, isn't it? And so you just got to work out, work this stuff through. But we saw in the news where from their press releases now, folks, it's, I'm afraid, I, I, excuse me, I'm going to correct that. I, did, uh, I started with the news, then I said, I got to go get their press, re- press releases. So I used Oregon State Police press releases on what they were saying and then the governor's office press releases. Words right out of their mouth, copied and pasted. And she claims that the issue on HB 2020 was climate change and we live in a democracy. I took that to show a direct violation to our injunction in 2013 where we named climate change one of the things of the sustainable development that's a treason against y'all everywhere at any time. And the other was that she, we didn't, we didn't think that she understood the government she's supposedly wielding too clearly that she was the, the incompetency is the mental idea that we live in a democracy instead of a Republican form representative government, which we defined as a government that protects property and producers and all the things that our lawsuit speaks to. So we take their words and we show, and I, we used it in a capacity to show relative to the Constitution, black and white printing that she could be held for criminal charges due to incompetency. That's a mental condition that she doesn't have a, f- a fair awareness of what she's doing, and she's imposing things uh, that are detrimental and even treasonous, Not and that she's already agreed to as being a member of the Bar Association and a Democratic Party, that she needs to be, that the OSP needs to look at this as a, our, our equity enforcement as a criminal complaint consistent with the Constitution for arrest. I guess my point all this is I'm trying to explain to you without going through and reading it all to you, the, it ain't over, folks. And uh, your ability to be there in the fight when you don't, no one else, when the other, when the fight looks transparently over, is markedly increased to be a, a fight and to continue the the the, 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 the to uh, stop this arrest and arrest this problem. It's here long after everybody's gone home, long after all the senators show up, long after the session will be ended. We're still now focused on now the not just the governor, not just the condition. We're all focusing now on the chief, uh, one of the chief law enforcement offices and how they're derelict. Why? Because this whole problem of accountability is the lack of internal accountability. And so I guess, again, today is I'm showing you this stuff happens transparently to you because there's no internal accountability. And it took the police in Italy to expose this child abuse thing. I mean, and they only limited it to child abuse. It's worse, folks. I can just tell you, just like I can predict Sandusky and, and, and Pennsylvania and then off over into the and, 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 and Saville, all that. And now you see where it's all gone. The elements are there consistent. All the changes is the subject matter that's being used to harm you under the cover, color, or the happy face of something so-called lawful. And yet all these players have no lawful capacity in them. I've told you, you know them when you see them. And you have to know what to be looking for to, to know that. And where a constitutional limitation is, someone can't use their, their donations to run for office that are from outside their own district. And they do. And then there's an attached criminal charge attached to that inside that same statute that's your ticket to ride folks if that's all you're there for and for those of us all of us that are not pointing that out we're allowing this thing to go i don't believe that that's consent 
but this is one of the responsibilities this Republican forum was if we didn't want people like this abusing us. And so the accountability, when it can't, I'm telling you here, you're seeing the DHS won't do it internally. I'm saying no system will actually do it internally, at least the what I can find. And it's now on us, and I'm now bringing another level that you can bring for those of you that find interest in this. You can do this in all your states, notwithstanding the carbon problem that was coming through HB 2020. Are, are your officials that are making laws against you actually lawfully in office? And I'm going to add something that I don't think Gregory uh, talks about in his article. You uh, have a de jure, a de jure officer, and th I don't even know if that's possible, but let's just go there and say it's possible. Especially in this, this state of Oregon, that, that, st that state in 1953, you just go to their ORS 174, about 500, 510, 515, somewhere in there. You can read where the, 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 the permanent laws of the people were substituted for HB2, which was when you go to the archive and read it, which I have done. You go into the archive and you read the HB2, and it's essentially the Model Business Corporation Act from the Bar Association that supplants, substitutes the permanent laws of the people to show you the Bar Association which is now an, an, an organ of the state, an agent of the state itself, overthrew the permanent, the permanent laws of the people. And so we, we go through a different channel, but what qualifies all that is like things like the constitutional requirements, and Gregory brings up another point. If you all look around the country in your places and you start looking at this website he gives you, check out some of the people and see if you have a law that does this limitation for the vote, for the money, Again, it's not supposed to be outside influence on money. It's supposed to be only to the people that donated in your district that get you elected. That's pretty cool, right? I mean, that makes some sense. And yet no one's made it broad accountability. Certainly the OSP has it. And so here we are with a letter we get to, we're, we're, we're now engaging with the OSP why they didn't check all this. Because there is no accountability at this time. The only accountability is us. Those of us that bring the black and white. I keep telling you about this. So there's no opinion. The facts are the facts. The evidence is the evidence. And it shouldn't be long-winded. It should be pretty direct, pretty easy to see the intake, the location of where the money came from, whether or not it was within a district of a politician, in this case in Oregon, and whether or not the money expended was strictly related and um, confined to those that came from within the district. And if not, then they have uh, they have committed a well, what, non a non categorical felony. Now that that has a meaning inside the felonies, and I don't remember. I drew, I researched that I, just for you. I can't remember now what that meant. Uh, but anyway, it's still a felony. That's not your opinion. That's not a claim. That's what the Constitution says. And then you want to then you turn that around to the uh, to a law of, official that's supposed to keep that law. And when they don't, then you bring up, like we do, we do this. I mean, this is the same thing we do. You bring up the fact that under federal law now, remember, Civil War changed this place. These, are, these states are actually administrative divisions. So I get to go to federal law pretty quickly and say, well, I told this, whoever it was I sent this letter, and they did nothing about the crime. They're now an accessory. That pretty well knocks out anybody who wants to say I'm a cop, I'm a law enforcement, I got a puffy, nice shiny badge and a, uni and a uniform becomes a costume, doesn't it? Now, how fast did that take to do? Pretty quick. I think that's pretty fast. I think it's pretty simple. I think it's pretty effortless in a way. Anyway, so while it sounds like this is going to go down, uh, the there's no HB 20. Apparently, they, it's, it's uh, again, I get, I, I'm skeptical about all this stuff because I don't trust none of these people. But a day's gone by and nothing came out of it. After the Democrats and the governor, you got to understand that the... the um, the conflict of interest, the failure of the separation of, of the branches of government in, 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 are when it was reported the Democrats, the legislature, and the governor agreed to kill or table or remove HB 2020. Now, listen very carefully about the Democrats. How do the Democrats have this power by themselves? First of all, then the legislature, and then the governor. The separation of powers violation is the governor, before it was given to her, was already involved with the negotiations to kill it with the legislative branch. From our point standpoint of our lawsuit, 
that the legislature were also Democrats, and the Democratic Party was a Democrat, and the governor was a Democrat, and the Democrat and the and the governor is also a member of the bar association. That's one big treason right there, proving again in a different way the separation of powers requirement that's supposed to be kept. And I we add in our without going in too deep, but we add that the standard for that is the mere appearance of impropriety. And while I'm telling you is how you can stand there, be a witness without too much harm, black and white, almost copy and paste, presentations back with requirements that are supposed to be had, pressing on the obligation and the oath that everyone is told exists, contrary to the truth you see, contrary that any of the law actually seems to work, until there's this mass of people that you see do, do work. They killed, remember, this was a do or die thing. They were going to put, they were going to charge people with $500 a day fines, go track them down like dogs, and all of a sudden it just disappears, evaporates. How is that, folks? How can somebody, something so important can just evaporate on a so called negotiation if it was so important? Is the fraud, is the hijacking of the system is what I was telling you, the senators, notwithstanding their Republican re, Republican Party affiliation, were doing the correct thing is to their duty. And, they're, when, and especially when they're facing someone in office that looks like they got their office unlawfully. But what happened? No one challenged it. Uh, uh, from inside the system, which was their duty, remember the branches have inherent powers to check the other branches. So that's the first violation, how you can tell real quick. That's in our lawsuit as well. We bring that up in every letter. The inherent power was your derelict in the inherent power. If they're derelict in office and that's an offense under the Constitution and they are derelict in that power, then we have them under constitutional violation just in that sentence, don't we? If you never come to witness that against them, do, are they, are they going to hold themselves accountable? Well, obviously, the, 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 the fact is nobody will because none of them, even the senators that were beheld against, can show, apparently by at least these two, through this article and the proof provided by Garrett Gregory Williams, neither of them have their lawful, are lawfully holding their office. The very first thing you challenge when you do your research, testing everything, and the fact, again, that we're not, allows uh, things like the DSAH doesn't, doesn't care about accountability. Uh, it took a police, and again, I don't know how this came out in Italy. Finally, someone uh, accounted, made some accountability for what was supposed to happen correctly relative to the kids over there in Italy. But, which, again, I'm just telling you, that's a global thing. The rights of child it was invented for that. that. So, again, the rights of child is a tr human trafficking tool. It looks like it's law. It's all, no, it's all foreign, but it looks like it's a premise that they can use. And all these people flock together. Now we, now we use that little school of fish. All of them flock together, but there's none turning away. And then in Italy, they got caught. They're preserved now, just like that fossil in the beginning of the broadcast. So uh, important, again, and as more of us work together, again, my hat's off here to the disclosure. I didn't go down this track because I think we nailed them pretty hard on the fact of their unlawfulness relative to our default. But if, if you, if you, I wanted to point this out with what Gregory Williams points out. If you don't have that, you go through this way. It's just as powerful. And w until we get people doing this stuff, instead of all the whining and gnashing of teeth relative to other things, like, oh, we complain, no, be, be careful not to go off and like I'm insulting this. I agree they have to be addressed. I'm saying they have to be done better and different than what I hear people just screaming about 5G or sm uh, the smart meters or uh, the, your, your taxes or what, what, what all I hear. There's a different way to approach it that's more fundamental to the black and white you can use. It takes away all the all the opinions. It takes away all the interpretations we might have as researchers that think we know. I don't have to interpret the, what the Constitution says relative to the uh, campaign funds of, a, of an officer in, in the law in a, in a government governmental office that uh, that ha you can black and white by math show uh, math and the law applied show that they were not lawfully in the office. Okay, so the, I guess I'm trying to point every time, every week I come here, there's ways that we can engage that you don't have to get beat up. Like, 
I guess at some point, if I hadn't been paying attention, I'd have been beat up long before I ever got to the pedophilia in the system thing in 2000. I mean, my whole thing starts when I'm almost dead anyway, right? When they arrested me uh, for a non tra for a tra thing that they, they they invented a traffic crime that I didn't do, and then I'm standing looking at five officers ready to pull triggers, and you see what happens now about that, you just die. And like I told you, six months after that, somebody did die on a traffic thing. Well, he got shot in the back 23 times. So that's my first entry into the reality of government, how it don't change, and then it protects itself. And so it took a while. It takes a while. I'm here to accelerate that path, that learning, and show you the path, how to do this. All the news I tell you, the tabs I read whenever I get to them is just... Uh, a, a place do you find interest in this does this excite you can you jump in here go down this direction here's some pointers about it you'll learn more as you go you'll learn more what to do uh, you'll actually start seeing what you need to do so that you don't even really most people that are really into it start to develop their own way I don't I'm just almost marveling at how what y'all do I've told you this before there's no, there's no excuse to make here HP 2020 is dead Everybody in the population pressed it. I'm telling you, JMD, Jefferson Mind is still sitting there. We're still making more. We're going to be pushing harder after everybody goes home. Why? Because it's systemic unaccountability. This is the main problem. The rules and the laws are there, but they're not being enforced by people that are incestuously involved in their little uh, thing that they all get together, flock of seagulls gets together to peck you crickets. Thank you, Vinny. I think that just popped in my head. I don't know where that came from. But anyway. I'm pausing here and just thinking I'm, I don't know why I get resistance in many sectors, on many places, on how we look out in the world and we look at it in our own town, we see it so messed up, and I come along and say, listen, we've been doing this stuff wrong, let's go here and do this, and here's some examples of when we do that, it works. That Everybody just listens to me, and, and that's it, goes on to the next thing, goes and clicks the next thing without saying, well, you know, there is something there I can do. It, it's been a marvel to me to watch. It's disappointing, but but I've wa I'm watching how, again, Transparency can exist. Organized crime exists right in front of your face, and you'll deny it. You'll deny it's as bad as it is. You'll look at something that you get to claim as, oh, not good. You'll dismiss it has a problem, and you will not do what we were thought what we needed to do so that we could live in peace from this nonsense. I mean, I look at what's going on and actually how it's supposed to work. This inherent power, when I did this in 2013... Research that it was. I had to reconfirm again. I had to restudy a bunch of stuff to make sure because I'd learned this stuff for 10, 15 years before I wrote that document, uh, the complaint. I had to reconfirm all these things were fact, the way they were supposed to do, with the view applicable to the cause, and then I reaffirmed the fact of uh, inherent power and real. And that word guarantee popped up then too, where this the checks and balances happened in the mere appearance of impropriety and how far away from that standard we were, I realized why we were in the condition we're in. And if we all can just pull together long enough to start getting that back, I, I don't even know. I would like to see how that system works that way before I condemn that system. But it's never worked that way, it seems, because we, the people, have not insisted upon it, even though we were told that we needed to. Now, the thing, once it starts working again, then you might be able to turn yourself away and go do what you want to do in your life and always check back once a month or whatever. Is, is the, the instrumentality called on to do what the, the duty, is it still fulfilling that duty? And if we had everybody looking into that, calling out the very first position, I think we start to come back. We saw it. The HB 2020 is dead, folks. I don't know what else to tell you. It's dead. It was supposed to be the biggest thing since sliced white bread or refrigeration. It was the new world order going to come and save the utopia, going to save Gaia and everybody, and all other life forms, except yours. And I think people just blow that off. They don't realize this is a, 
there's some people in the world that are just psychopaths. One of them, a bunch of them are sitting there in Oregon, and they got so close. But it just took a bunch of people, and I don't know, I told you this before, I don't know what part what we're doing is going to be ever mentioned. I don't know what part the uh, the invasion of a bunch of import, uh, interested people running their semis in, and all the producers that came in. Amazing, all the producers showed up in Salem for that rally. Uh, there, I'm sure there's some other segments of society, but all that was, uh, all that hit the news was that there was loggers and uh, ranchers and farmers. And I noticed, uh, interestingly, the miners were not mentioned. Not that I wanted them in there. But my point is that mining it really is just this this redheaded stepchild somehow no offense to redhead stepchild stepchild children there you don't realize the importance of minors you don't realize what their the, the foundational place they play and they weren't mentioned in the news that they even had a care but here we are met jefferson mining district probably with the most formidable foundational attack on this now aided by a, a research that someone else has done gregory williams relative to a constitutional provision of how people get their office. Boy, that's just a slam dunk for me to use. I don't have to worry. Thank you to Gregory Ford. I'm going to now have to reanalyze it. I just got it here just before breaking news here for me uh, before the broadcast. I haven't analyzed it. But it, again, all these violations are there that no one brings accountable. Why you can have transparent criminal conspiracies, organized criminal syndicates right there in the government that are willing to do what they want to do, need to do, no different than any the mafia would love this sort of dynamic. Folks, this is us. We're allowing it. And so, congratulations on the population, the pressure, the uh, everything that came down to kill HB 2020. It, the monster is not away. The dragon got, got whacked and it's, it ran away. The infrastructures, the capacity is still in that state to do all everything. I can tell you that because we sued it in 2013. They don't listen. They're criminals. And it popped its head back out in 2019. You get that? So we're watching, right? So we're here watching and continuing to watch that these criminals still exist. And I have, to, and I look and say, we can only do so much. In this case, the thing, HB20, the rec, some of the population showed up. Interestingly, a high percentage of the producers showed up. That's the foundation of your society that's never supposed to be attached, attra attacked, folks, if you don't understand the seriousness of this. Maybe don't people don't think about it. Maybe it's beyond us. I don't know. Maybe that's why, you know, I kind of look around, don't see many people uh, jumping on to getting behind the woodshed to do their thing with their officials. And yet here's someone uh, uh, telling you that there's another thing that could be done. Nobody that, uh, by his report here, what he found out, nobody that was in the news is actually legitimate as office. Uh, they committed felonies uh, according to the Constitution. And then you all look on and say, well, that just shows how corrupt government is. No, you have to go in. And if you all that would attended the HB 2020 thing, you all had input to it, you now turn your attention on even what Gregory's putting on. Forget what we've said. I think you're going to put the pressure it's needed to begin to force that accountability. And if you add that little that little segment on again on top. So you always have a place to go. It gets harder and harder for them. If they, the more they resist, like Chinese finger cuffs, not made in America because it was Chinese finger cuffs. These people get in the official Chinese finger cuffs and they're never going to get out. It only stops when you stop. They can't get out of this stuff. And when you back off, then they get it again. They win. When you don't back off, it kills. It killed HB 2020. It allowed some other things to happen relative to appropriations, but I'm going to take I'm going to have to take what I can get when I see the population moving in the right right way. Even though it was as, I mean, I, the stories I'm talking I'm listening to are ignorant as can be, ignorant as can be. But that's okay if that's all we have, just the the mass of pressure. Then I guess that's what we have to start with. So I'm grateful for that much, and that can happen everywhere. And uh, there's more and more reports about about that as we start listening listening through through the uh, airwaves if you will the system as it is and I told you before and I'm going to move a little different I'm going to start to show you how this thing gets adjusted and how they start messing with you as well and I don't again it's hard to discuss this without sounding like I'm encouraging or discouraging I'm just trying to talk in the neutral about look at these conditions Look at the mis the non-disclosure and the effect. 
the state of Oregon, I told you, is really a de facto existence. The Bar Association created this, essentially this corporation under the Model Business, or, or, uh, business uh, Corporation Act. It's not the de jure state. So we have de jure and de facto. So getting taking that aside, let's say that, that the officers were de, de jure. We're back to the old, the, the Oregon, not, not the state of Oregon as a corporation. And even if we were de jure and then the officials running for office gained an office that violated the Constitution, they're de facto. They're not lawful. They're not within the law. And this, uh, this provision that Gregory Williams points out in the Oregon Constitution would be that condition. So even if we had the system whole and organic, the officer is de facto. De facto officers can make rulings, and they stand as law. They work instead of a, of a de, de jure. Again, it's all up to you to stop it. This is why I told you about the Obama problem. Given if, if it is valid, if we would ever get the truth and it's invalid, you can't. There's nothing you can do. He's a de facto officer making uh, making decisions. But he doesn't have the right to hold the office. You have to. You, he either has to vacate it or resign it, or you get to throw him out or whatever. Whatever the mechanism is. That we have a condition now, a long since now, as we looked at this question, we move on to now, what's in these corporate st structures but persons, legal entities? When you go look at the word person, as I told you, like in this one state here alone that we've been talking about, Oregon, at the time I was doing the research, there was over 128 different definitions for the term person. Term person, not a word, a term. It's legally definable. How do you have that many definitions for one word? It, blows me, it blew me away. But then that's what you understand about within jurisdictions, there's also limits to within the jurisdiction or the authority of the particular administrative function. And it's confined to that. When you start getting your mind wrapped around that, you start to realize how, in a way, it's tedious, but it's easy to get down to, what am I talking about? Why do they define person 128 different ways? It's 128 different authorities that they're trying to impose through that fiction. Yes, I said the word. Yes, it's a straw man. Don't get over yourself about it. This is just what happens. But that brings up some interesting questions relative to when the government now sits in this capacity, but it's dealing with real people. And all these people, the freemen, the strawmen, the patriots, they all realize this. We don't quite get it. And they don't quite get how they have to adjust themselves with it. It's how I moved back and said, okay, well, I'm free of all of that. Why? I don't have to argue it. And I just make sure I have a, a never, another place to sit. And it doesn't matter to me. I can identify that fraud straw man everywhere. It's not me. It's not on me. It's not my liability, and you have no right. It's a trespass to try to talk to me about it. Now we talk about, look, with the officer trying to do that, is he lawful in that office? Gregory Williams says, oh, if, you, if, you, oh, if the candidate's fee, uh, funding comes from outside a district, he, he's a felon. That, that off, or her, she's a felon in that, in that capacity. This is all under the under the Constitution, the corporate, but then we have this thing about a statutory versus real, versus organic people, men and women, not persons, with no, with which already are neutral gender-wise, which is the whole joke about this this gender, gender non-binary nonsense in legal. But anyway, getting over this story was a very serious story, uh, but it, and I don't again, it's hard to discuss. It's a bad situation. But it, it's instructive a bit to inform us on things if we're interested. A pregnant woman who was shot, charged for baby's death, shooter goes free, was a story and title. Really sounds terrible. The problem is, uh, there's you got to go read the story about this. And I don't, again, I'm not going to say one way or the other. I do see some serious problems. I don't get in far enough to find out what this woman who was pregnant apparently attacked somebody. That one defended themselves with a gun. Whether or not the for use of force standard that it was appropriate in that case, I don't know. But it was found that the woman who attacked the one who resorted to a gun in their defense, who shot the baby, was the instigator of the baby dying because of the defense. Now, this is an unborn fetus. And I want you to think about all the nonsense coming around this problem relative to what I was talking about de jure de facto corporate or, or organic or governments, whether or not you have accountability or not and what that does and how that adulterates the whole scene. But now this woman is being charged with the death of her baby due to her attacking someone who had to defend themselves with a gun, shot and killed the baby. My question is a question. Relative to the law only recognizing persons because why it's a whole, you see, it, it, the person doesn't exist until it has a 
form that they can attach. And some of you with the birth certificate crowd will get all be commenting about that. Yes or no or indifferent is relevant to the point that the person is a legal entity. It doesn't exist until it exists tangibly. How did this state, which is likely administrative division of a federal government, which is also in a corporate capacity or under the law of war or whatever, not de jure either, how is it able to actually claim that the baby was cognizable in a court for the purposes of saying that the baby was killed at all? is something I'd want you to go look down because this is a very critical distinction that needs to start being made. I told you they're mucking up the works. They don't want you to see this part. One way or the other, I don't, I'm not saying it's going to be covert. And it's, all, it's all something that's a, it's the crime of the century. It's the distinction between organic, actual organic, and, and de jure or de facto. And it's the line that they blur all the time. Now, if that woman was attacking somebody and they felt they have to defend themselves, I don't know what to say about that. But how are the more important, for me, jurisdictionally, for me, when you're trying to qualify whether something's coming against you or ac accurately and correctly, where Roe versus Wade only regards uh, certain rights and then there's no person until birth. And don't get lost in all this so your mind goes lost. I can just hear these all these things I've heard. Oh, the birth, birth canal, oh, the, what, what Jordan Maxwell, stop all that. Okay, you can go down there, but you better start dealing with reality about it. Even if it's the case, what are you going to do about that? Are you saying that you you're saying that, that there's nothing else? Well, I found something else. So if you had another thought, maybe you should listen to me a little bit better. Actually, engage innocence here. Be, pre, have the, at least the presumption on you, not not the subjection that you assume in your words with someone else trying to sell you down the river uh, after the birth canal. But your birth, oh, yeah, admiralty. Oh, we get off. See, folks, stop all that. I'm going to. Stop with all the words. Look at the basic function here. If a person is a legal entity and the law doesn't actually recognize a fetus prior to birth because it's not tangible in the world, in that jurisdiction, whatever, however presumed, how is a murder charge being made against a person in the state? And so maybe I should just leave it there and let you think about that. Maybe it's important. Maybe it's interesting. Maybe it's not. But... Maybe I think too much, right? I mean, I can always blame myself on that, right? It's just just me, but I don't think so, folks. This is the this is the anomalies that that are being that posted right in your face as to how things are not quite right that show ways and separations that need to be made. Whether or not this woman was justified, whether it's justifiable to charge her for the baby's death, I'm not even talking about. How does the state attach something that it has no? given that Alabama is a state like any other state that I've seen, where a person isn't existent until you have some form, some application, some identification, even those of you that would say the birth certificate, I don't even really think that's it, unless you make it evidence, and who does that? So you do that to yourself. But anyway, it doesn't exist until you present it, right? Otherwise, it doesn't, they don't know where to get it. Anyway, so how are they able to identify this as underneath Alabama's control? And boy, that brings up the idea maybe this woman is underneath Alabama's control as a, as a freed woman. Yeah? And that's a whole other story. And so until you start working this thing through in your own mind and working out the facts and the, and the, and the nuts and the bolts about it, you actually might have trouble with what I'm talking about, how tedious it might appear to sound to look at somebody's office and whether or not they're actually issuing lawful orders. This goes all the way down to your cops and your local commissioners and all this other kind of stuff. Given you have a state and a constitution that has a determination on use of the money for campaign funds, and they, ex they exceed that, and there's a penalty of, in this case, felony, that, that's a de facto officer operating only because you continue to allow it. So your silence is the consent to allow that officer to continue making lawless orders. That's not their fault. That's not their problem. It's not actionable, as I told you about Obama. Was, whatever whatever that, that was. But how many years have we gone on? I keep telling you the same stuff. And if you're going to sit back and you're going to sit back and not do anything, I don't know about y'all. And those of you again in Oregon, this is a big, bigger deal, I think, than people appreciate. The Oregon thing, HB 2020, gives a lot of people the ability to roll up their sleeves and really engage that place, and really start to bring the accountability and out all those that won't. The black and white is there. It's not your opinion. 
when the black and white says it's a felony to do something, there you go. That's all you have. Then you find the duty of someone that has to impose that. At least get it in the system, and all of a sudden things start to change. And you do it with the mass of energy, the mass of interest that just happened in HB 20 to kill that bill that was going to go through, folks. Unless you did that, it was going through. No letter I could send was going to stop it. We know that because no letter I sent in 2013 before the lawsuit would stop them to cease and desist the very same treason they were doing in, in HB 2020. But the sheer volume of interest that was there now focused, what I've been telling you today, will start to bring the type of accountability that actually might get things to function a lot better, and we can then start turning to the things that help us. Until then, we're going to be under the thumb of this tyranny. It's coming back. It's coming back with a vengeance. We see it, like I said, we, we see it with the fires. There are, we, we've got a lot, number of counties actually understanding the power to stop the fire, which was through control of the smoke. I had to go through a total different way to get this done. They finally see they can do that. And do you know the other side, the, the arsonists, are already mobilizing with their publications that are everywhere to, to actually advocate for continuing prescribed burns? Is our problem. The, uh, the criminals have a better capacity than right now organized than the people understand. And the people are not organized to do the very simple stuff, even this as much as Gregory Williams just showed, just that much. En masse would be enough to stop that other side. Whatever, how, because that's the mechanism they come through. They come through this fraud as well. And no political party is free of this either. So you lose your, again, you can just free yourself of all these constraints I hear people put on themselves. We have a function. I said, focus on the function. The function has failed. That's on us to get it back. Because there's people inside the caucusocracy that's brought, right, risen up. The felons that are inside the system aren't going to go anywhere, folks. And if that doesn't define your duty as a citizen before you start griping much, I really don't know what to say, in a way. So, anyway, the last story, uh, where a legal person in these fictional governments that operate in felony and don't even follow their own rules, and they, you let them do that because you don't bring up the nice, concise, narrow position, and I'm saying not only relative to what I was just reading about the reflection of the com campaign trend, uh, contributions, even just that, so simple. If you won't do that, what do you expect to see? And then why would we expect anything else but the gnashing of teeth and the whining and the complaining? Uh, you're, you're, that's a predisposed position, isn't it? You're, 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 you're wishing that, it, you're willing that part into existence. Not supposed to be there. You'll condemn all of the establishment of government, even though the government the establishment says it's not supposed to be there. And yet, I can that helps to uh, to evade the responsibility to be vigilant uh, and educated, I suppose. And, and so you don't you start looking like this other ongoing discussion I'm having with interest uh, with uh, what we do is a uh, so-called uh, science. Uh, new lab-grown mini-brains are most advanced yet. You're not working, well, if you're going to allow all the rest, you're not working with more organization than these new mini-brains that science is now uh, calling homegrown. What I found fascinating about this story, just mentioning it, and I'll move on. They're actually developing three-dimensional structural structures resembling uh, a cerebral cortex. They're actually organizing themselves in a predetermined way. Well, however, they haven't decided how. I find it fascinating in this article that they say that this doesn't mean that this the artificial neurons behave like those in our brain per the study, but they can never become conscience, conscious or grow into a full organism. I'm talking function, folks. It's organized enough to make itself look like a cerebral cortex. How do you say it doesn't have a con What's your definition of conscious? And yet these things are working more efficiently than the people in the government, you, the people in a society that were supposed to have a brain and function better than this, this thing that's less than a full organism, to protect yourself. Why aren't you doing that? An organoid brain does that, organizes up and makes itself better. 
And the monkey watching on of how this magic is working says, that's not conscious. Maybe it doesn't have to be, folks. <laughs> Maybe it's beyond us, if then else. Maybe it's beyond artificial. Maybe there's something in that we don't even touch in our awareness, how blind we are. But I, I find it fascinating that a group of stem cells can organize up into a structure and uh, without, without instruction, without a constitution, at least one that we understand, uh, it does it automatically that we can't get ourselves one that m work under a constitution. We can't put the brain cells together enough to be able to keep ourselves in some kind of a form and function. It's fascinating to me. We, uh, nature gives us the, the example, and we will argue it's supposed to be a natural law, but we'll not do a darn thing to, within it. Not all. Not at all. And so, there's a dynamic in the world. I've learned a little bit more what that is. Uh, I've learned that we have to engage in certain ways, and they're not it may be taste, not very tasteful. And no, I'm not making an artificial brain steak. They might not be tasteful, but they're necessary right now. Until we get a handle on these people that will come under the color of an authority to harm millions, folks. I like guess just in the state of Oregon, millions of these people. And we see the fact of our, uh, our lack of capacity. You know, I don't even know if we're involved, evolved to the, to the, we cannot be involved to the standard of a monkey because where an organoid brain will form up into a cerebral cortex to try and be a brain, uh, we find the next story, nearly 100 cars got stuck in a remote field after blindly following GPS routes. Now, what, why are we, why are we letting these machine, AI machines uh, talk to us uh, and, and running us out of our own reason? is how and why we complain that government is beating us down. It's actually the people in government are allowed to run amok without accountability, and that accountability is allowed to continue because none of us step up. And when you see everybody stepped up, whoever and however they were able to defeat a crime against you is really the example of the thing I've been talking to you all about. I told you it would be nice if a letter, one letter, one, one observation of a problem could fix things. And in some regards, it's, it is, those are there. But on these big, big major things, it requires everyone. Or um, I, it requires sufficient numbers of everyone. And you never quite know what that really is. So you can't do this by complaining. You have to have the complaint. But, do you, uh, but my suggestion is go look and see with the jurisdiction authority is there first whether or not uh, that is sufficient. Now, I said, do not walk in with trying to make an argument with these people. You try to argue HB 2020, they'll beat you to death. They'll beat you at every turn because they, the, they got the system. That's why they wanted the senators back. We just want the quorum. Just give us the quorum. We'll put it through. They knew that. And yet it was so important, they just, they just killed it that fast. Fascinating dynamic. But it's not. It took a bunch of people that didn't get lost going to going up into the state uh, house up there. It was Salem those truckers using GPS because they would have all been off in some field apparently because they don't have they wouldn't have had the brain uh, the capacity of an organoid mini organoid brain where 100 cars get stuck. It was actually the people in the cars. See, they don't talk about that. Just the the system, not the people running. They get stuck because they don't have a brain in their head, and we see evidence of that. That's us. That's our society. Being, we run down the wrong road and get lost. I don't even know what else to say about that story. It's just indicative of our problem in this world. We run everything on automatic pilot. We end up in the middle of a field we don't understand. What I tell you, you live in the middle. You're, you're put in. You're putting yourself in the middle of a battlefield. That's denuded of any kind of protection, any function, or anything, and you then complain about the fact when you are the one that drove yourself there. Because you, you use something that you thought was a brain and intelligence, something even the organoid brain wouldn't do. All right, I'm pausing enough. Are we thinking? Are we thinking at all? You think I'm, I'm too much? What? What? What is an opinion here? You either act, get action, you do stuff. You either guide yourself and do what you need to, or someone's going to, someone's going to make something to to entice you and induce you off the path you need to be. 
you're not even in connection with your own reality. It's really a fascination to me, that story. And what else is going on about GPS and airspace and technology? Move it over even further now to show this is a global condition. People that don't have a right to make a claim make claims. People that don't have a right to actually do what they do, do it until someone stops them. And hopefully faster than the eight fish that tried to butt, tried to swim away from the impending doom that captured the whole school in the fossil that we start with. Israel accuses Russia of interfering in air, airspace GPS. You understand this technology becomes a hub of how we act, and it's, it seems to be in a place of contention as well. Well, GPS was a military thing, wasn't it? So we don't have people that actually think when they use GPS. Now we have people using GPS that are actually occupiers in foreign lands, blaming someone who has permission to be in a land. The color of an authority to try to displace an actual authority. It's a fascinating, repeating story to me. Israel has accused Russia of interfering with GPS systems in its airspace. It's airspace. It's an occupier in Palestine, folks. That, that has not been determined. That's not even, I don't even, it's no opinion more than it's never been to determine that. No, we have a bunch of people that have a war space that they've developed and never actually proven the, 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 the fact of the land except Big Brother who also appears to be able, if willing, not be able, they're completely capable, of supporting all trespassers and occupiers in foreign countries. Like we just heard Trump uh, agree a bit with Turkey and its ability to be in Idlib, where Russia is helping Syria. But an occupier now is complaining about its airspace and some technological interference. No outcry about this. Now, Russia can only do what it can do. It just doesn't, it's going to say it's not happening. But this little occupier, occupation on people, hurting and harming people, will continue until the proper authorities step up. I mean, uh, wh why is it, again, the United States is willing to harm other, support terrorists, support occupiers in foreign lands, they're willing to do it where you live. And they're willing at this point, and part of our, 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 our notice of enforcement regarding our injunction is maintaining a Republican form of a government, the, the guarantee of which was sitting in the federal government and not being done where there's clear violations. Allowing an invasion through the mechanisms and methods that you saw the Democrats... And the Bar Association had to be behind this too. Abandon under the outward pressure of the people coming in to start look at the criminal structure. That's why I say it's time to go on. Keep moving further. Keep pressing now, folks. Don't give up. It's because you went home because you see HB 2020 went away. Don't give up. These people, the governments, remember the EPA is behind this with all this environmental stuff, the pillar of an inv of foreign invasion. The same thing the United States does. The United States an embassy in Syria supports Turkey's efforts to maintain Idlib sea fire. At the same time, Israel is claiming that Russia's G uh, electronics is, is interfering with their GPS to go bomb these people. But the United States supports Isra the Israelis. I hate using the word Israel because it's not really what it is, but at any rate. Israelis, the Zionistas, and Turkey, both occupiers in foreign lands. How is that? All coming together. Well, I always find it fascinating, the, the GPS connection to those that got lost. Further connected to the organoid brain being more conscious, it seems, than those people that got lost. And we got to stop doing that, folks. we got to stop this nonsense. We see the HB 2020 killed because people got together. Stop your infighting. Stop calling people's names. Listen to what they're talking about. If someone starts to feel, even if they talk a little wild, if they feel that it's important, maybe you should maybe help to look at. Someone says they're they're stressed out because their house is on fire. If you had an inkling like you smelled, smelled smoke, I don't think you'd treat them the same. But this is a place where you don't smell that smoke, so you think that they're just a little bit out there. I would ha ask us to have a little bit more empathy than we have name calling and uh, false assumptions and this and now I'm responding a little bit to a, a, an interaction we had on Twitter and, and Vin, Vinny did mention it I don't have time for the nonsense of people that would come with false assumptions 
that we would vilify other people when we have a real problem. Now, I wasn't even agreeable to how that, how one, the one that was communicating it was actually, in fact, I had a criticism of it. But it wasn't because I was I need to name, name call. It said we had a better thing to do and a better thing to say, and I was hoping we'd move in that direction. But there's a real problem. You can't you can't laugh and call somebody a name when they said their house is on fire. You either stand there and be the help the accessory to the arsonist, or you go help them fight that fire. I don't know how each one of you is wired. I tend to run to the fire every time I have. Then you don't have to usually tell me twice. In fact, I'm really a better the better than the little school of fish. Where nine are running away, I usually am running to the house as they come they come out asking about ha- yelling fire and smoke. Because I'm you got to be aware of your surroundings before disaster hits you. And so that's just my methodology. I don't know about most of y'all. I hope most I think most of you are the same way. But in a political sense, we failed ourselves. And I'm asking, and they're killing us. They're literally wanting to come and kill us, folks. I don't know what to say. You can complain about carbon. You can complain about the taxes. You can complain about, what is it, to Bill Gates and his uh, little formula to population reduction. You can complain about population reduction. You can complain about uh, the stones down to where Georgia guides stones. You can complain about all that stuff. Yes, that's a plan. It's a plan against you. That plan's our problem. But there's ways to defeat it pretty quickly. And I'm asking us to step up into that. And I'm trying to help, you know, I guess I'm helping you to help me. If you just would do it, we can help each other. Now, in this propaganda nonsense that goes on, how the United States will create things for us to uh, get uh, to, to look past, where the, where the United States will support occupiers of foreign lands and condemn those that are trying to protect themselves. And remember, the people are suffering at every point here. Whether I go to North Korea, Syria, whether we go into Yemen, uh, even into the into the um, up up at where there's Donbass and all those places, strife, strife, strife. For what I don't really understand. And yet you see people can talk together, and we don't. Why? I mean, part of it is we give over to the propaganda. We don't listen. We get, and then we get turned a bit, like in breads and circuses. And I said earlier in the broadcast, I don't get into a lot of these things anymore. The, the, a lot of the stuff I used to be interested in, as, as I guess the world starts to close in and, and how it wants to abuse you, you just finally give up. You finally give, you, you give up all the other things to say, I'm not going to let some, enough is enough for those that want to come and harm me or those around me or those like me. I guess that's how it happens. That's what's been going on with me. And so I'm leery of getting into too many things that I may have been interested in. And But I see the government working, at least by what we're told, working to make multiple paths of confusion. Get us interested. And my problem is that this takes away from all the people that could be working together to solve problems like HB 2020 and beyond. So it's, it permanently stops it, what, what the foundation of our injunction does. It works to make the foundation to do permanent stops so we don't have to worry about this kind of thing in the future and all your kids are going to be harmed. We wrote, wrote in one of the letters that the, the governor was using the children in one of the press conferences as a human shield, claiming that she was going to protect them. Now, we get to say that because that's exactly what it is. But if you're just talking as an opinion, see, we've got a foundation to build from. We don't have just an opinion. It's not just our opinion that's what's going on. No, this is what's really going on. And so I'm, I get more I'm cautious of the information and why does information come out. And there's been a little thread going along. Remember we talked about catastrophism and all this other stuff and the little pool of fish and how the what an amazing capture, given it's not, given it's not a, a, a painting. <laughs> but what an amazing capture on a dynamic living system. That, that is pretty cool. I used to get more into that. I wanted, again, oceanography, all the study of the earth, of the space, all that stuff. And then today we get the nonsense of, come, everyone, no one goes and tests this stuff. They just go glom onto YouTube or something. And we're going to, all these other false things that go on. So I'm real leery about the information, and more importantly, what it does to draw us off of what we really should be doing. And one that I kind of pulled away from, though I've never, I'm really more into the energy side of it. These are fascinating ideas relative to powering Units and the things I've I've seen some stuff in my life that says we shouldn't be where we are. We should be a lot more advanced in our power 
power shouldn't be a problem. We shouldn't even have power bills. And I'm not talking just like this free uh, free energy. There's other things that are more. Well, free energy is just a term. It has there's a basis underneath it that's actually working. And if you even work with the known sciences, you're not really pulling from nothing. You're actually pulling from a system that pulls from another system that pulls from another system. Even in the in that that sort of uh, reductive type of point, you don't have to get too too wild. At any rate, there's been a story coming through, and I don't really get get into this too much about uh, something popping up relative to disclosure and UFOs. And to me, uh, I look at the breads and circus as part of this. You know, some people will, will just laugh at this, but this is a serious thing when you look at it from capturing people's attention and taking up their time. When, uh, at least from my perspective, they could be doing something to protect themselves against the, all those other things that they would be interested in, like the same energy things, like 5G and bad and malware and computers and bad air and bad water and plastic and all this other. No, you get focused on other things, and a lot of people put a lot of energy. Well, this week, and on the, on the heels of a whole lot of other so-called disclosures that had come out, uh, docs show Navy got UFO patent granted by warning of similar Chinese tech advantages came and hit the hit the news. The United States Secretary of Navy is listed as an assignee on a several radical aviation technologies patented by an aerospace engineer working with the Naval Air Force Center uh, Aircraft Division. I think that's cool. You go read and look at some of these. They're cool. And if you look inside, there's some interesting things and statements made that I would say some of you that know about this need to go check the term and what the dynamic that they're working. There's elements inside these patents of things I've looked at and seen done tests and seen responses I've never put in practice that are seriously interesting in this. However, they weren't done this week, and they've been an ongoing of, a seeding of patent uh, information over time that just happens to come together at the same time that they're trying to invoke a disclosure that somehow people in the government understood that there's crafts and and, and beings and uh, this, this whole thing. And you look at the players, and it looks to me that the main promoters are all CIA. That when this story about these patents came up, and I'm just big time interested in the background technology about this, not because it's UFO, it's just it's just cool technology. These things beyond us give us an inspiration to go look for the better the better thing. I think though this may be a big setup, and the information's there. And I think for those of that understand it, you need to go inside those patents and look. But I think this is a a false type of a dichotomy that's being put out that gets you involved, to get you engaged, to put a lot of time in this stuff. And it's really just a setup for a takedown if it's just not your time. You know, I've had to even talk with Gary L. and they do this, and just, they, they present this stuff, uh, which is interesting as heck. But I want to, for me, I, I'm, after seeing what happens to us, and we're being hurt and harmed, and our kids are being abused and all that, to, to, to be focused on other things that look like, they're 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 set up. They're like setups coming out of the gate. In fact, we were talking some email uh, the twitters. I've got the twitters that, that I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not sold on a lot of this stuff. That if it's taking up our time, we, we really got to be careful. The technology is cool, but I don't know. It's uh, there's just too much that we can be propagandized into bread and circuses. That uh, uh, the agent of of harm, the United States government, is willing to do to us and willing to do to our states, and no accountability to it. That we have to look past all this and get into the accountability. Seems to me it wouldn't have a 17-year patent shelf life and would be hidden due to national security if it were totally authentic. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com. I hope uh, and thank you for all you do there to keep the website running and and Bo Diddy for uh, updating the Free and uh, Freedom Network. We don't talk about that too much, but thank you. And Sound Minds over there and all whoever was over there, if you did live, thank you there. And Jules, thank you very much. Hope something I said today will engage you a little bit better. Uh, again, black and white is there to use. We don't have to use our opinion. doesn't take that much. We just got to get involved. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. That's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
but that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 